My name is Becky Souls. I will be your worship leader today. To those in the parking lot, thank you for tuning in to Asbury South 91.1 FM. The music ministry team is looking for singers, those that feel very comfortable with their voices and those that don't feel as comfortable but have the same goal of singing in a group for the purpose of praising the Lord. We rehearse on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. See Deb Schnitzky if you have any questions. There will be an education meeting, committee meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. All are invited to attend and bring their ideas. Ushers are needed beginning in October. If you're able to help with this important ministry, please contact Billy Graham. Tuesday lunch and community store are open. Come have lunch and stop by to, to go through the shop that has been restocked. The Friday morning cafe is open on the first and last Fridays of the month. The next breakfast will be on Friday, September the 3rd. Come and enjoy a full service breakfast for a $5 donation, and it's very good. If you have someone in need of prayers, please call or email the church office. A list will be made so the pastor can include them in the Sunday morning broadcast. They will also be included in the next week's insight. Please check the insert in your bulletin for any additional announcements. Thanks for listening. If you would please stand for our call to worship. God has blessed us with every perfect gift. God has created us and claimed us as God's own. We are truly intended to be one of God's greatest gifts. Worship and praise match the majesty of our God. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome. Come, Holy Spirit. Now is our time to worship.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, who imagined us as a grand creation, who formed us in your own image and likeness, oh God, whose love is so amazing, we have yet to understand, and yet we are grateful. We are grateful that you formulated a plan to forgive us, reclaim us, and live in close relationship with each one of us, despite our sins and our failures. As we enter into this, your sacred space, we invite your Holy Spirit to come among us and to infiltrate our hearts and our minds, that we would receive your love, your power, and then turn and share your love and power with those we meet this week, inside and outside the church. In the week ahead, may we constantly recall that Christ did die for us as our inspiration to live and love like Christ did. Fill our worship and inspire our living that all people may know your love this week. Amen. Good morning. Since we're all technically children of God, anybody who wants to come and cop a squat on the steps can feel free because you're going to get the kids' moments anyway, even if you don't. Hi. She's like, no, I'm not coming by myself. Okay, I get it. All right. No, well, okay, but don't break anything if you sit down and you have to get up because I would. I'm just saying. I'm old. I get it. No, you sure? She's like, I'm not doing it, Okay, Pastor. all right. No pressure. Okay, no pressure. Fine. All right, well, this is going to be full preci per precipitation. No. The one where everybody joins in, that's the other people. Yeah, that one. That's what I said. Okay. I love Brussels sprouts. Who likes Brussels sprouts? Okay, cool, cool. All right, who likes cauliflower? Broccoli. Football. Pittsburgh Steelers. Ohio State Buckeyes. Okay, that was better. I'm not asking about that other one with the ish in the front. I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, who likes soccer? No kidding. Who likes rugby? Oh, I do. In an Irish pub? Oh, let me tell you. Those are the greatest. Okay, sorry. We'll talk <laughs> later. Anyway. Okay. Um, who likes having to get up really early to come to church? Everybody raise your hand because she's looking at us. That's a thing. Okay. All right. So who loves school? Who loved marching band? That was, what happens at band camp stays at band camp, I'm just saying. Right? Okay. So now that we've established that, who doesn't like Brussels sprouts? Wow. Okay. Who doesn't like cauliflower? This is going to hurt. Who doesn't like the Pittsburgh Steelers? Be nice. Yeah, I know who your dad is. Okay, so whatever. <laughs> who doesn't like the Ohio State University Buckeyes? Could I be their announcer or what? Okay. <laughs> Again, I'm not talking about you people with the ish. I'm not doing that. All right. So I am sad to say because you don't like Brussels sprouts or cauliflower or the Steelers, and you don't like rugby because nobody raised their hand. I don't understand that, really. You need to see that game. <clears throat> I can't be friends with you. I'm sorry. I can't be friends with you. Because friends have to do everything the same. And friends have to like everything the same. And Christians have to think everything. No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't have to all like Brussels sprouts. We don't all have to like cauliflower. We don't all have to like the Pittsburgh Steelers that I don't understand you. And we don't all have to like rugby, although you're missing a thing. We can still be friends. We can still all be children of God. We can still all be Christians. We can still all have a good time at BW3s on a Sunday afternoon as long as my team's playing. 
Did I say that out loud? Cool. God forgives everything, right? Good talk. All right. So with that said, y'all need to remember, as do I, as do everybody else on the planet, because we're missing that a lot, we don't all have to agree on everything. I like that. Let's do that again, only a little louder. Amen. There we go. Let's have a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for Brussels sprouts and cauliflower and rugby. And thank you mostly for friendships. Amen. Thanks, guys. Our scripture lesson is James 1, verses 17 through 27. This is based on the New Century Version of the Bible. Every good action and every perfect gift is from God. These good gifts come down the, from the creator of the sun, the moon, and stars, who does not change like their shifting shadows. God decided to give us life through the word of truth so we might be the most important of all the things he made, listening and obeying. My dear brothers and sisters, always be willing to listen and to slow to speak. Do not become angry easily, because anger will not help you live the right kind of life God wants. So put out of your life every evil thing and every kind of wrong then in gentleness accept God's teaching that is planted in your hearts, which can save you. Do what God's teaching says. When you only listen and do nothing, you are fooling yourselves. Those who hear God's teaching and do nothing are like people who look at themselves in a mirror. They see their faces and then go away and quickly forget what they looked at or liked. But the truly happy people are those who carefully study God's perfect law that makes people free, and they continue to study it. They do not forget what they heard, but they obey what God's teaching says. Those who do this will be made happy. The true way to worship God. People who think they are religious but say things they should not say are just fooling themselves. Their religion is worth nothing. Religion that God accepts as pure and without fault is this, caring for orphans or widows who need help and keeping yourself free from the world's evil influence. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. If you'd please stand and sing hymn 171, there's something about that name.
Amen. Please be seated. There is something about that name. Let us pray. Author of creation, in whom there is no shadow and no variation, may your Holy Spirit enter every mind, enter every heart. We pray that you would illuminate your holy word, that we might hear it, receive it, and live it. It is in Jesus' name that we hear and receive. May it be your word and your word only that is unleashed in this space today. Amen. Do you know who God created and called you to be? Do you know how God created you to be? Do you know the joy of simply becoming who God made you to be? And what have you done? What have you done? What have we done that somebody else might know that same soul-enriching blessedness? Whether we know it or not, whether we accept it or not, whether we admit it or not, human beings exist in a tension in the world that is the world as it is versus the world as God intended it to be. It is the world as it is versus God actually created it to be. It's no wonder then that people can get so mixed up. It's no wonder that it can be hard to know who you are and to take pride in who you are and who God created you to be, to appreciate that God is in fact the architect of who you are. And to recognize that would then allow you to work on becoming the best of who God wants you to be. Forget what the world says. Who does God want you to be? And are you able to put all your energy into being the best person that God intends you to be? Because God loves every person. And God's desire is for every person to love God, the same God who created them. God wants to love them and have them love back. And God wants each one of us to live in the fullness, into the fullness that God has always intended. To live into the full person God made each one of us to be. And yes, God made us to be different. We already heard that. The other thing is, well, there's, there's two things. First, God created us specifically to be who we are. It's not an accident. We didn't stumble into it. But when a person fails to believe in God, and I mean the, the wholeness of God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or whatever words you want to use, when they fail to live into that, when they fail to believe, how can they hear anything except the earthly voices that are intended to lead them astray? Do we know um, who they are enough to love them as God would have us love them? Or do we only know who they are when they're like us, as we heard in the children's message? Or think of it this way. Do we love Jesus enough to let him entice us back on the path of living as though everybody is important and everybody matters to God? Have you ever considered, with compassion, not with judgment, those who are lost in the world? And I'm talking about, yes, those ignorant, rude, disrespectful, bigoted, arrogant, self-centered, misogynistic, misguided, sinful, unlovable people. People who make us want to pull out our hair because they get on our very last nerve, because they always do the wrong thing. They just always are in the way. Don't we just sometimes wish they'd go away? Isn't, is that what Jesus would do? Is that what Jesus did? Jesus sought them out, right? He talked to them. He loved them. We have all kinds of descriptive terms. Some of them are not profane even. But most of the adjectives that we apply to people that get on our nerves don't, don't belie any love that God gave us. But think of this. What kind of adjectives would we apply to people, any people, especially the most annoying people, if we thought of him or if we thought of her as one of God's great gifts? Might we use different words if we saw them, if we thought of them as one of God's great gifts? Now, I want to take a minute, and let's think about gifts, because most of us like gifts, right? 
If you're one that doesn't like a gift, raise your hand. You should probably go ahead and take a break because this won't make any sense to you. But if you like to get a gift, maybe listen in for a second. I want you to think about the best gift you ever received. Or if you can't single one out as the best gift, think about a very good gift that you received. I want you to call to mind the image of that gift, big or small, but just think about that very good gift, what it meant to you, and how it felt when you received it. Now, one of my very good gifts, and it perhaps was the best gift, I'm not sure, was a present that Santa gave me when I was five or six years old. And now, because of how old I am, which is the oldest I've ever been, I realize <laughs> I'm not the oldest person here, but I grew up in a different age. And it may surprise you that when I was a child, I never had blonde hair or blue eyes. And I wasn't quite sure why all of my dolls did. And then my parents just kind of um, pointed out to me because of my age, well, I was part of them and none of them had blonde hair and blue eyes, so it made sense that I didn't either. But I didn't quite understand why, I mean, there's nothing wrong with dolls that had blonde hair or blue eyes, but it just always made me feel like maybe I was still supposed to have that. And then one day, and it was a, a Christmas, not by surprise, Santa left a gift for me under the tree, and I want to show you my gift because I still have it. She became little Maria. She's still little Maria. I still have my baby doll. But the reason I was so impressed, it was such a good gift, it's the first doll I ever had that even looked remotely like me. So my parents pointed out that she was adopted. She had different parents because we don't look exactly alike, but she didn't have blonde hair or blue eyes either. And suddenly, she was like my best little friend, because the other secret was, I always wanted a sister. First, I wanted a big sister, and then my mom pointed out that once I got here, that wasn't quite going to happen. And then I said, well, I would take a little sister, and she said, well, I'm sorry, the baby factory is closed. That's not going to happen either. And then I tried turning Brian into a sister, and that didn't work out. Um, he really didn't even look good in my clothes, but I gave it a best shot. So this became my sister. And it was a sister because it looked like me. Now, please, please don't misunderstand. I still have a lot of the other dolls. It's not like I didn't like them, but this is the one that made it okay for me to be brown because I had a doll, I had a sister that said, guess what? There's difference in the world. And somebody who wasn't born into my family could look something like me. It was a great gift because it showed me that God intended us to be different. And some people had blonde hair and blue eyes like the other dolls, and some people had brown hair and brown eyes and brown skin like little Maria and like me. And I first felt loved and accepted in a different way. Your family's supposed to. But I felt like God loved me, because look, I had a brown doll that looked like me, one of the best gifts, and in my case, it taught a couple of things. It taught me to appreciate gifts that come from God, and it taught me to appreciate gifts in a different way. This wasn't just another toy. It was a toy that spoke to my identity. She let me know that I was okay just as I am. She also helped me understand that human beings must be pretty important to God for God to go to all this trouble to make us so unique. Because we could all look alike. We could all think alike. I think it probably took a whole lot more effort to knit us into the individuals that we are. And then, what about if every person was equally important to God as he is, as she is, as they are, because God made them that way? And if that's the case, what if the church acted that way? Whew, what a concept! The scripture today reminds us that every perfect gift, every good gift is from above, is from heaven, coming down directly from God. We as human beings are a product of God's dreams, specifically created in God's own image, in God's own likeness. Each of us, a vessel, a transporter, if you will, the home of some special aspect of God, because God created us that way. 
I have often wondered if God's gifts, apart from salvation and life itself, get any better than humankind. Think about the diversity of humankind, not just across the continent, but what about across time? Think about what a gift human beings are. Then, though, reality steps in. I think about how great humankind is until somebody cuts me off in traffic. And then I forget all about how great humankind is because at that moment, I don't even consider humankind as even remotely resembling God because I'm not sure that if God were in a car, God would cut me off. But my frustration in traffic or in the checkout line or wherever I am when I'm frustrated, it doesn't change anything with respect to how God feels about God's gift of human beings. We are God's special creation. It's clear in the scriptures. Do we in church treat it that way? I mean, we tend to do it on Sunday mornings because we're on our best behavior. But do we treat it that way when we are in the car that got cut off? Do we treat it that way when the person in line in front of you has 20 items and we've already talked about the sign says five? Those are moments that I have to struggle because when I look at them then, I don't see a gift from God, but I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. Every person is God's great gift directly to God first, God's gift to God. You are God's gift to God, but then you're also God's gift to the rest of the world, and that's true for you and every other person. Whether or not we are willing to admit that another person is one of God's gifts, the scriptures certainly lead us to that conclusion. And if a person is important to God, who am I to disagree? Just a thought. If humankind really is one of God's great gifts, then we would be better off to accept that all the time and work with it instead of working against it. What if we behaved appropriately when somebody cut us off? What if our wave was all five fingers instead of one? What a concept. And if every person is God's gift, what a glorious world this is supposed to be. What if their worth were based on their giftedness of God and not the world's identification of what worthiness looks like? What if instead of sorting, judging, categorizing, and excluding the unworthy, we should simply recall that humankind is God's gift to God and to the world, and that every gift from God, every gift comes from God directly from heaven. So I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we can agree that God values people. We can agree on that, right? And I think it's safe to say that God made each one of us a unique creation, because if you're suspecting that's not true, I invite you to look around. There's evidence that I'm right, and you know I like to be right. But think about each person is the home of at least one godly attribute. What about, instead of thinking all the negative things when somebody cuts me off in traffic, what if I started wondering, I wonder what aspect of God that person has? Probably not their driving, but I wonder what aspect of God is within that person. I think we could probably do that. And if we practiced it, guess what? I know we could do that. I know that's what I've been trying to do. I'm not going to tell you I've succeeded yet, but that's what I try to do. When that wrong idea pops in, I kick it out. I say, you know what? God loves that person. And God knows that person may not drive well, but what is it that's special about them? What's the God part inside them? What if I treated every person like they were a gift from God, whether I know it, know why or not. And if I accept that that person is a gift from God, what if I took it a step further, that whole not just hearing but doing? What if I actually worked to love them, to nurture them, to accept them, and to encourage them to grow into who God created them to be? What if? According to the translation that we heard, the New Century Version, verses 17 and 18 say this. 
Every good action and every perfect gift is from God. These good gifts come down from the creator of the sun, moon, and stars. I'm not sure if this is the right translation. This is a different one, and I don't remember which one it is because I wrote it down wrong. So there's some translation, not the one we heard, but here this one, maybe, I'm not going to guess. Um, this is the one day I don't have all my translations in front of me, sorry. So maybe it can be a challenge to look it up, but hear this one because it's not the one we read. Every good action and every perfect gift, oh, it is. I'm losing my mind, sorry. So my God gift is not my sanity. How's that? According to the translation we did read, every good action and perfect gift is from God. They come down from the creator of the sun, moon, and stars who does not change like their shifting shadows. God decided to give us life through the word of truth so that we might be the most important of all the things God made. The most important of all the things God made. Let that thought resonate. We human beings, the most important of all the things God made. What if we worked at recognizing and celebrating people for who they are without consideration of how they look, how they act, or what we think of them. Years ago, there was a movie, I really liked it, and one of the lines that uh, struck me, it was Dirty Dancing, and in it, Baby's having a conversation with her dad, and they've kind of fallen out because he's disappointed in her behavior, so he's given her the cold shoulder. And she says, well, you say you love me, but the thing is, if you love a person, you have to love all the things about them, which means you have to accept the bad parts of a person or else you don't really love them. If a person has to look like me, think like me, believe in God the way I believe, and then I say I love them, I'm a liar and the truth is not in me because love accepts the person as God created. Did God create us as people who sin? Do we sin? If we didn't sin, would God have needed to send Jesus? We sin, but God loves us anyway. So what are we supposed to do? We see each other. We all sin. We're supposed to love each other anyway. When you say you love somebody, you have to love all the things about them. We have to work on being lovers of God's great gifts especially the ones that we don't by nature love. And we can all be honest. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. Who here does not love someone because of who they are? It happens. I can tell you there are people who don't love me because of who I am. And that's okay. God made us all different. But we in the church who know what salvation is have to remember all the time that one of God's greatest gifts is humankind a gift that came directly from God in heaven. Do you know that you are a beloved child of God, created to be who you are? Do the people you encounter know the same thing? Do you treat every human being as one of God's most important gifts, regardless of what they're doing? Or do your words your voice inflection, tell the truth about what you really think. Because faking it isn't the answer. It's practicing, practicing, and practicing until we're no longer faking. We can practice loving until we really love. And until we really love everybody, we have work to do, all of us together. That's why we are here. We may not sometimes like the human part of God's creation, but it's God's greatest gift. And aside from you and what you think is right, aside from what I think is right and who I think is right, we have to have love, forgiveness, and a desire to love anyone who's different than what we are because they are who God intended them to be. Every good gift is from above, and the human being is the most important of the things God made. Every good gift is precious to God, which means every person is precious to God. Every good gift. That's the scripture, not me. And the human being is the most important of all the things God made. No heathens to annihilate. No people to push out of our way 
but objects of love that we are supposed to look at to see God in them and to embrace them for who they are, the God in them and the human in them. Every good gift comes down from the creator. God decided to give us life through the word of truth so that we might be the most important. If we treat every human being as a good gift, as a perfect gift, what a wonderful church, what a wonderful world, what a wonderful life it really could be, even on this broken earth. Every good gift is from God, and every person is one of God's good gifts. And the better we get at this, the better life will be for all of us, inside and outside the church. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you love us because we know the parts of ourselves are unlovable. God, we confess that we are so good at overlooking our unlovable parts and not so good at overlooking the unlovable parts of anybody not related to us, already our friends, or even like us. Yet, God, you worked so hard to create each of us to be who we are. Help us see one another the way you see us as a perfect gift sent directly from heaven, housing you, created in your image and likeness. May we see your image and likeness in others around us. And in so doing, can we begin to really live and love like Christ has already taught us. It is in his name that we pray, amen. Let us prepare ourselves now to go before God with the joys and the concerns of our hearts um, we say, O oh God, we thank you for every good gift, for every perfect gift, for the earth and all that is within it, for the creatures that include animals, for the cosmos, and for the great gift of humankind. We apologize for the times when we don't act right or say the right things. We confess that we might be forgiven to start over and love as you would have us love. These are the names that we lift up this morning for those we want you to take into your care to bless, or God, those that we want to thank you for already blessing. We pray for Deb Schnitke, who is ill this morning. We pray for all those who are in harm's way as a result of, uh, I think it's Hurricane Ida. We pray for all of her misbehavior, and in particular, we pray for Jason, Tammy, and Aiden Lindsay, and for all in the New Orleans area that are in harm's way. We pray for all who are in harm's way. We offer prayers today, God, for the families of the service persons who were killed in the attacks in Afghanistan. We pray for all who were killed or wounded, and we pray for all who mourn them. We pray for every person who is still in harm's way in that region. We pray that the evil that has infiltrated the minds of some of the people there would be driven out by the godly love for humankind and all creation. God, this morning we lift up those who are chronically ill and for those who are temporarily ill, and we pray for all their caretakers. God, we pray for those who are grieving this morning, and we pray for all those who have lost their way, who have no idea who they're created to be or don't like who they're created to be because the world told them they are wrong. God, we pray for those who are hopeless, and we pray for those who are addicted to something or to someone. We pray for those who have rejected Christ, and we pray for those who have never known him. God, we rejoice with those whose physical conditions are improving. We thank you for healing in so many people, and we just pray for continued healing of the body as well as the spirit and the soul. O oh, great giver of all heavenly gifts, we thank you for hearing and receiving our prayers. We thank you for loving each person, regardless of their circumstances. We pray that they would confess any sins that require forgiveness, but we pray that no matter what, we would learn to love as you would have us love. It is in Jesus' name that we pray these words. And now, God, we ask that you would hear and receive our words as we lift our collective voices and pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every gift that is willingly and generously given is a perfect gift. May God's word of truth, having found a home in our hearts, burst forth in loving acts in our neighborhoods and in the world around us. May the spiritual motto of generous giving characterize us, that we live the word and not just read the word. We cannot beat God's giving, but we can certainly embrace the precedent of sharing the gifts and blessing God has provided to us. God of light and beauty, great giver of all good gifts, 
we return to you a portion of what you have already given to us. Please bless and multiply this offering that lives can be transformed by it and every person can know they are a precious gift, cherished and embraced by God and by the church. Amen. Remain standing and we'll sing the gift of love, which is number 408 in the hymnal. are God's great gift to all of creation. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are embraced for who you are, just as God created you to be. Such simple words to say. And yet we don't love ourselves even, as God wants us to love ourselves. We don't recognize in ourselves and others that we are, in fact, perfect gifts from God, created in God's own image and likeness, housing attributes of our very creator. Instead of trying to wrap our arms around that, metaphorically speaking, 
we are more comfortable denying in action, if not with words, that anyone who is not right is also not valuable and isn't worthy of belonging. Oh, sure, it's okay for them to go to the church across the street or the church down the road. I mean, after all, they're well-suited for Peter, Paul, or Mary United Methodist Church, but our church, they have too many kids with different fathers. They're too poor. Have you seen the clothes they wear? Do you know what they believe about God? Certainly they don't belong here. Those are words that we use to tear people down, but what if we treated every person, regardless of who they are, as though they were God's gift? We don't have to agree God made us difference. different. If we in the church could get back to this loving people the way Jesus loved people, our churches would be so full we couldn't fit people in here. We'd have multiple services every day because people need to be valued. If the church would value people the way Jesus taught, what a wonderful world this would be. The world doesn't need our help reinforcing division, prejudice, or stereotypes. The world is doing fine at that without our help at all. Can the same be said of the church? Is the church doing everything it can to perpetuate what Jesus taught, what Jesus asks us to do? We are beloved children of God. Do we act that way ourselves? Do we treat others that way? Consider this. You are God's beloved child, one of God's perfect gifts to all of creation. So go out and love someone else as though they too are one of God's perfect gifts. And guess what? The more we practice it, the more we will believe it. And the more we believe it, the easier it will be to see it. You are God's perfect gift. Go out and find other perfect gifts this day and this week. Go forth to seek Christ, because that's what that is. Go forth to serve Christ, because that's what that is. Go forth and be the church, because that's what being the church is. Amen. Amen. forgot. Hold on. 408. <laughs> Six, seven, oh, whatever it is. Six what? Seven, seven, two. Six, seven, two. Oh, you guys did the other song. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was outside, remember? Remember? <laughs>